Hey YouTube, what's going on? Food photography is a passion of mine, and today I'm going to be sharing how I edit my photos in post. Now, if you're new here, welcome to Free Will Photos. We're a photo editing channel that's dedicated to helping new photographers learn how to use photo editing software and gear so that way they can create the images they want to share with the world. If that's something you're interested in, consider hitting the subscribe button, checking the bell icon as well so that way you get notified every time that we post new videos. Now let's get into the content. Okay, so here we are in the computer looking at an image that I took a little while ago of three cupcakes. I really enjoy this image. I think I want to share it on Instagram. You can also follow me on Instagram at Free Will Photos. Uh, but we're going to go with a Instagram here. So I'm going to go ahead and give it that good old one-to-one -one crop. I'm going to come up here to my crop tool check on freeform and then hit one to one for square. And I actually like exactly where this is cropping it. So I'm going to hit okay. What that's going to do is put more emphasis on the cupcake that I took the pictures of. One of the things with food photography is making sure the hero of the shot is very clearly identified and everyone understands that that is the hero. So I want everyone to know that this purple cupcake that's been framed by these two white cupcakes is the hero of the shot. I did that intentionally as I was styling the shoot. I said, okay, I wanna make sure that this purple cupcake is well uh, framed. And that's what these two cupcakes on the outside, they help with, but we're gonna enhance that a little bit more. I like detail in my shots. So as you can see, I didn't do anything over here in the develop module. I left that completely alone. In fact, I'm still on the on one standard. Uh, instead, what I want to do is go to effects. We're going to click on add filter. And the very first thing that I like to add to my photos is the dynamic contrast. I really enjoy using this filter. Uh, it just brings out some of those details that you wouldn't otherwise get out of an image straight from the camera. I do shoot raw, so my images are pretty flat. So this contrast helps with boosting a little bit of those, that, clar that clarity. Now, with that being said, what I do with this is really, uh, for food photography, I don't want it to be overly aggressive, but I do like punchy, contrasty images. So the, the basic setting for right now, I think is gonna work fine. The next thing I wanna do is I like to throw a vignette on just so I can see what happens when, and I'm gonna throw on Big Softy for now. So now I'm starting to get a little bit more of that drama into the image and, and that's my photo style. I really enjoy throwing drama in the image. The reason why I do that early on is so I can pay attention to the hero of the shot. I want every edit to be in complement to that particular item, which is, in this case, the purple cupcake. Now, what I'm gonna do is come back to the tone and color module, and I'm gonna start making some edits here, adjusting a little bit of what I think this photo should probably take into consideration. Now, I'm not gonna print this, uh, but I am going to check to see where I'm clipping. I'm clipping in my whites, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring down my whites a little bit because I'm not printing this. Uh, however, I do enjoy to keep, or I do wanna keep a, a pretty good tonal range on the image. And it looks like I'm gonna have to bring down my highlights to get the rest of these, because yeah, that's where it was. It was in the highlights. Now, so far, I don't see anything clipping in the darks or in the blacks here. It looks like I just hit the, uh, the, the blacks there because I'm not getting any clipping icons or blinkies, markers, whatever. However, I don't feel as though this image has enough darker tones. So I'm going to actually drop this until I start to see those. And there they are. So... If you're new to photo editing, 
Whenever you turn on your clipping mask or your clipping icons, whatever you want to call it, uh, you'll start to see in the darker areas a blue color and in the uh, lighter areas a red color. Now, one of the things about shadows is your noise lives inside of the shadows. So you always want to try and get good exposure when you take the picture originally. However, the trade-off to that is you don't want to clip your photos in the highlights, which is more of the brighter colors. So what you want to do is really get your exposure to happen in the, uh, the mid-highlight zone, if you will. What that's going to help you do is keep the exposure well enough, give you some headroom that you can boost the exposure in post, uh, but you're not boosting too much of those shadows, which is where the noise lives, and then you don't have to use any noise uh, modifiers. Now, I shot this image using a flash, and I, I was in complete control of the lighting, so I had a reflector on one side to bring in and keep these shadows from not getting too dark. And then I had my main or my key light coming in from this direction. And you can tell that from these highlights that are sitting right here. I was using a strip box, so I was able to really direct the light where I wanted to go. Now, that's uh, probably more than you bargained to get. So. I'm going to go ahead and turn off these icons now because that's okay. I, I think I got what I was looking for out of it. Now what I want to do is really focus in on bringing some punchy contrast to just this cupcake. So I'm going to go back to my effects. I'm going to hit add filter. I'm going to hit dynamic contrast again. And this time I'm just I'm going to drop it underneath the vignette because I don't want to add contrast to my vignette. This time I'm going to click my masking tool. I'm going to uh, So now that I have my masking tool selected, I'm going to come up here to the masking bug and I'm going to use the uh, preset strong vignette. Click right here in the center. And then I will drag this down onto the inside. And it looks like I'm going a little too far out. So let me drag this down for a second and reshape it. There we go. And then I can click and drag these pieces. And I really want to get just around the cupcake. In fact, I'm going to bring it more in into the cupcake like like this because the area that I really want to focus on is right here and it all swirls up to the top there I'm gonna go ahead and drag this out now as of right now all the contrast is being applied to the outside you can kind of see it on this cupcake here what I'm going to do is come over to the mask, tap on invert, and what it did instead was it brought all of the contrast to the inside here and then it starts to feather it off to where there's no more contrast anywhere else except for right here. If I turn this off, you'll see that it's not as contrasty. There's uh, less highlights on the cupcake. And then when I turn it back on, there's going to be more highlights. It gets a little bit more vivid. And that's what I was going for with this particular look. Now, I'm going to drag in on the cupcake here. Or I'm sorry, not on the cupcake. I'm going to drag in on this thing, whatever this thing, the dotted line. Yeah, this is my feather. Uh, so because I don't really need it anywhere else out there. So all the way on this side of the dotted line, that means there's no effect that's happening. Inside of the dotted line, it starts to taper it. And then inside of the circle means that I have the full effect. So essentially, I only have the effect happening right here. And then this dotted line is where it stops. 
and then it goes out into nothing being affected, all right? Which is what I want for this particular uh, modifier or filter. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tweak this a little bit because I think I can definitely increase the highlights just a little bit more and I am going to bring down my shadows to really give this some more punchy contrast. And to verify that I got what I was looking for out of it, I'm going to hit the icon to turn it off and then I'll turn it back on. And you'll see I got the purple a little bit darker, the highlights shine just a little bit more. And the very last thing that I want to do is add a color enhancer. What I want to enhance on this is all of the reds in the tone. I think that those need a little bit more vibrance. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on my reds and I will increase the range. And what I'm going to do is saturate them. And there we have it. And I'll turn it off and on just to make sure that it does what I want it to do. Off, on. It's a little subtle, but it's a really, really good punch. And it adds a little bit of colorful vibrance to the image. Now, I want to tailor that to just this cupcake, but I do want these to be a little bit vibrant. So what I'm gonna do here is go to my mask again, and I am going to, so I'm here on my mask for the cupcake again. I have my masking tool selected. I'm gonna click on the masking bug, strong vignette, and I'm going to click on the inside here, invert it, and then I will drag this down just a touch. Make that smaller. Bring this in. Well, I guess I'll center it. And then I'll bring this in again. And then what I'm going to do is just drag this out because like I said, I want those to be a little vibrant vibrant on the reds, but I really want it to affect the ones on this main cupcake. So if you look at this one, it's actually split right where the feather stops. So everything that's inside of here is gonna get a little bit of that vibrance boost or the saturation boost. Everything outside of it isn't. I'm going to click on the range just to increase this red uh, a little bit more. And now, when I turn it off and on, you'll see that the on the actual cupcake, the vibrance is just elaborate. I'll close the mask and go back to my viewing tool. Now, when I turn on the color enhancer, you'll see that it pops just a little bit more and that's what I was really going for. So the last thing I'll do is close up the vignette and I will have the brightness down, bring in the size because I don't need it to be that large. The cupcake's pretty small and then I'm just going to center the vignette onto the cupcake. Now there's different ways of getting this the vignette done but I just find that using the vignette tool is probably one of the better ways. And you can bring down the feather if you wanted to, to make it look a little bit more uh, cliche, if you will. But I think this is about right. And this is all gonna be to your own taste and style. And I want it to be subtle, so I'm just gonna do it like that. We'll go ahead and look at it before. It was a pretty washed out flat image coming straight out of camera. And then with a few editing filters, we we're able to get to a little bit more dramatic of an image. So there it is. That's how I edit my food photos. Hopefully this was an easy to follow tutorial for everyone who's watching. 
Now, if you found this video helpful, please smash the like button. It helps me understand that this is content that you like. If you didn't like it, then go ahead and dislike it. I'm completely okay with that. That just lets me know that this isn't helpful. Now, if you really want to help this channel get some exposure, I ask that you share this video with a friend, post it on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever social media platform you use. It'll just help with getting some more exposure to this channel and helping other photographers learn how to use photo editing software. It doesn't have to be scary. It can be fun. It can be easy. So until the next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.